Teresa Burrell to check out Claybird shooting. Tyler for lover, I'm Corinne, and today I find out about drag kings. It's after my hot date. And after that, she'll probably be heading to family planning. I am so not like that. Remember, you guys can check us out 24-7 right here. Girls, I'm in the shower. Do you mind? No. <sighs> What's up? I'm Mike, and after my night out, I'm going to recover in the Navy recompression chamber. Oxygen therapy, baby. What's up, people? I'm Sammy, and unlike these losers, I don't need to go a chasing tail. It comes to me, because later on, I'm catching up with four rock chicks from Ivy Lies. Can I get a towel, please? Or I think there should be plenty. <gasps> what are you talking about, huh? Ah! Yeah. Originating in England, claybird shooting was designed to simulate realistic hunting conditions. Since then, it has become an international sport, and today we're at the Waitemata Gun Club to meet our very own Commonwealth gold medalist, Teresa Burrell. And here she is. Hello. Hi. Now, let's start right from the beginning. What was your first experience with claybird shooting? Well, we'd been doing a lot of yachting. My husband said to me, well, let's give yachting a break and try something else. So we went to the Wangarei Gun Club. So I picked up the gun, we had a go, and I won the ladies' division on my first time out. <laughs> I'm just so lucky that I tried it. Because if you don't go and try something different, you might never know what you're good at. Where did you manage to take it to? A very good New Zealand shot, Des Co, said you really should try the Olympic disciplines. And I uh, made the Oceania team for Adelaide, and that was my first uh, international. We um, started to go into Olympic selections after that, won the Olympic selection shoot to go to Sydney in 2000, and that's how I, um, I've, I've got into it. Since then, you have actually gone onto the Commonwealth Games to win a gold medal. Tell us about what that was like. Uh, that was awesome. That was in, uh, in uh, Manchester in, in 02. It was uh, in the double trap competition, which is two targets, not just one coming out. And I can remember thinking on the last five pair that if I was going to get anywhere, I had to shoot all of them. Shot the last five pair clean, and uh, we got the gold medal. Wow. Well, I thought while I'm out here with you today that you could actually let me have a shot. Do you reckon we could do that? Absolutely. This is a 12 gauge um, under and over shotgun. It uh, has two barrels, but we're only going to use one barrel for you. Shot. It has a safety catch. When the safety is pushed forward, it's ready to fire. When it's pulled back and you can see the S, it's safe. It has just a single trigger, and this is set up as a competition gun, so the trigger will be very easy to pull. Doesn't need much pressure on it. The most important thing about the safety of the gun is once you've closed this gun, make sure it's only pointed away. Okay, never at anybody. Okay, and it's away, out there. And as soon as the shot's been fired, I want you to break the gun open. By pushing that lever across, that makes the gun safe again. Step forward a little bit, that's it. Up, 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 up. That's better. Okay, safety forward. Right, okay, go. Pull! And pull the trigger. Oh! <laughs> You're not supposed to break the gun. <laughs> Wasn't so bad, eh? <laughs> it's hard to focus on the little white bit on the end when there's the whole world. <laughs> if you focus on the target, your gun will go there. Woohoo! Well done! <laughs> that was great! Well, Teresa, I'd like to thank you for giving us an experience of clay target shooting. If you guys would like to take clay target shooting as a sport, check out the website below. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Yeah. Mika, you're going to be late for your appointment at the decompression chamber at the Navy. No! Oh, oh how was your date? I'm going to be sick. Yep, Corinne is definitely off to family planning. Then maybe she'll have some time to introduce us to some drag kings. <laughs> hey, what's with the balloon? Navy's gonna make me breathe the stuff. See you later. 
The Royal New Zealand Navy has one of only three hyperbaric chambers in the country, which is renowned for treating diving injuries and patients with other illnesses. I know what you're thinking, hyperbaric what? <laughs> so we've come to the Navy Slack Hospital to find out a little bit more. Let's go. New Zealand, meet Dr. John Duncan here at the Navy Hospital in Devonport. Now, John, that's the hyperbaric chamber behind us. What exactly is it? The hyperbaric chamber is a facility we have here primarily for the treatment of diving injuries and recompression treatment. Right, and who uses it? Its prime function here is for support of the operational Navy dive team. After saying that, the people who go through it are primarily civilian divers with diving injuries. So you don't have many Navy guys using it? In the last 10 years, we've had no Navy divers with decompression sickness. Navy divers obey the safety rules, dive sensibly, and so we just don't see dive injuries from them. The bulk of the diving injuries that come here are from civilian divers who have got decompression sickness or the bends. Now, how would you get the bends? As we dive down under the ocean, we're under pressure, and our body absorbs nitrogen. If you stay down too deep for too long, yep. or come up too quickly, then you're placing yourself at risk of decompression sickness. So what does the hyperbaric chamber do to, for those divers that have the bends? Essentially what it does is the bubbles that form as part of decompression sickness get squeezed down and the bubbles compress. Then that helps your body get rid of the bubbles. All right, John, well, I'm keen to feel a bit of pressure. Can you take me down in your chamber? Sure thing. First thing, we've got to get you out of those street clothes, though, because we need to wear a special outfit for there. So why would divers use helium when they're diving rather than breathing nitrogen? We changed to helium because helium is less soluble in your body and you have fewer problems with decompression sickness. Also, there's something called nitrogen narcosis, which you're going to experience soon, and that deeper than about 50 metres, the level of nitrogen is, is such that you feel a little drunk. When we go down, you and me will be able to feel the pressure, but how can we show them what's happening? What we'll do is we'll get this glove, because yep. we don't have a balloon, and we'll blow it up. We'll tie a knot in it, and as we go down, you'll see this balloon get smaller. When we get down to 50 metres, we're going to blow another one up, and we'll see it get bigger and bigger and bigger as we come up. How's that? Yeah, we'll tie it like that. OK. Okay, air defenders on, stand by to leave bottom. That is the most legal fun I've ever had. Well, thank you very much, John. Thank you. And all the medical team here at the Hyperbaric Navy Unit. If you guys want to know more, it's right here on the website. It's you back at the house. Fat. Hey, guys, stick around, because coming up, I find out what it takes to be a drag king. So I'll be needing links. Girl, if you're going to do drag kings, then you better get the boys to teach you how to be a man. And if you want to be a man, try using one of these. Hey, have you girls seen my suit? I need to look good for Ivy Lies. What are these for? <laughs> Family, Family planning. planning! I told you I'm not like that! Hurry up! Oh.